Hi everybody and welcome to the Insight My Life channel. So today we're going over the essentials of exam P. We're covering combinatorics and today's topic is the binomial distribution. So to start with the binomial distribution, there are a few things you want to make sure are present. And the first thing is that the trials are independent. And the second thing is that the probability of success is the same per trial. Now let's take a look at what is the binomial distribution formula. So it's given here, okay, and I know it's a lot. You know, there's a, a combination there in the beginning, and then a P, where P represents a success, and then 1 minus P represents a failure. So I know it looks a little weird, and I that was my first impression too. And what I found has been very helpful is to take equations like this and put them into a verbal form. So let's take this and let's think of it this way. Out of N trials, choose k successes where p represents the probability of success and so by the complement 1 minus p or 1 minus the success rate must be the failure rate so to illustrate this let's say i have three trials and all three of them turn out to be failures so in equation form that's out of three choose zero successes so the success rate is to the zero power meaning that it didn't happen and the failure rate is to the third power meaning that it happened three times. So let's take two failures and one success. So out of three we're going to choose one success, so it's to the first power, and there's two failures, meaning that the failure rate is to the second power. So let's look at a sample question now. A seed company wants to determine the rate of germination for its seed packets. It is determined that the probability of a seed germinating is independent of other seeds germinating, and it is the same probability for each seed. In a seed packet, there are eight seeds. The probability of germination is 80%. What is the variance and expected number of seeds germinating per packet? Okay, so this one is just going to come straight out of your formulas. And believe me, when it comes to exam P, you do not want to try and derive these during the test. Make sure that you have these memorized beforehand. So for the expected value, uh, oh, where X is our number of germinating seeds, but the expected value of x is the number of trials times the success rate, so NP. So 8 seeds times 0.8 gives us about 6.4 seeds that germinate. Now the variance is NPQ, which is the trials, so 8 seeds, success rate, and the failure rate. So that's 8 times 0.8 times 0.2. So how did I get 0.2? That came from the complement. So think of the success rate being 80%. So the complement must be 100 minus 80, which would be 20% in decimal form is 0.2. Now let's take a look at an SOA sample question. So let's take the exact same problem, but this time let's look at the very last uh, sentence there after the third comma. It says, what is the probability that the number of germinating seeds is less than the mode of germinating seeds for the packet. So initially, and this was my response, is what in the world is mode? You know it to be the thing that pops up most frequently, right? And that's what I had learned when I was um, in high school or something like that. And that's all I knew. So I was like, well, how do I find that here? Well, going to the definition of mode being the value with the highest probability, and that's a rough definition, then also mode is sometimes used as a measure of central tendency. Remember how they used to make us do mean, median, and mode, or maybe not, but in general, mean, median, and mode are like the three measures of central tendency. So like I was saying though, mode is the one with the highest probability, and um, it is very close to the mean. So what that means is that whatever our mean is, our mode is going to be maybe an integer above or below it. So earlier we established that the mean is 6.4. So that means that our mode is either going to be a 7 or a 6. So, and you can also try a 5, but in general it's either going to be just rounded up or down. So 6, the probability of that putting in directly into our formula is about 0.29. And if we do the probability of 7, then it's 0.33. So we can see that our mode is actually 7. Now the question said, 
what is the probability that the number of germinating seeds is less than the mode? So less than seven. Now, are we gonna have to count up all the probabilities below seven? No, actually we can save ourselves a little work by doing the complement. So finding the probability that the x is greater than or equal to seven, and then just taking it off of one. So the probability of being eight is 0.1677. So the probability of it being greater than or equal to seven would be the adding up the probability of seven and eight together. So you can see the probability of seven there was 0.33, and what we just found for eight is 0.16. So putting those together, you get roughly 50%. So we're trying to find less than seven though, so we take the complement of this, which is one less than what we just found, and our answer comes out to be uh, roughly 49%. So anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe and leave a little comment if you'd like and I just I love your feedback it, it makes me very happy to know that I'm helping you guys in your in your studying and your progress and it just it makes me feel very good so uh, feel free to leave a comment um, and of course um, just the good feedback I feed off of it guys so thanks thanks for watching